again, our seventh annual Hall of Fame induction, and I welcome everyone back to Persephone Hills. My name is Mike DeSanto. I'm the principal here at Persephone Hills, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to this event. This has been a great event. It's truly one of my favorite, and I know uh, many staff members feel the same way, that to have alumni come back and see where we've come from and where we're going and where we are right now, and even individually for yourselves, where you've come from and now where you are in your lives. This is what this event is about. We want to hear what your adventures have been like over the past, whether it be 10 or 20 or even 30 years, um, just to hear uh, from alumni where you started and, and what your experiences were like here. We really cherish the speeches that we hear on this afternoon, uh, year after year, and it's just a nice tradition that we've been able to start. So welcome and thank you for attending this morning. Um, a couple thank yous I should get out of the way, um, but very important thank yous. Uh, Sue Bonnet, thank you so much for everything you do. Very briefly, you know, Sue approached me seven years ago, maybe eight years ago, just before this started and got kicked off the ground, and she said, you know, her and John Pico were talking about this, and they wanted to give it a try, and I was only a vice principal at the time, so I didn't even know if I was allowed to do something like this, but I pushed forward, and she helped, and, and Mr. Pico assisted her as well, and it's been a really great trip since then, seven years in a row, and every year we induct anywhere between six and ten uh, alumni into the Hall of Fame, and it's quite uh, an honor to have you here. Uh, Mr. Pico as well, who just retired last year, I owe him a big thanks for coming back. <laughs> Mr. Pico takes care of all the um, uh, welcomes uh, for all the inductees. He gives a nice little speech for everybody, so I look forward to that. And uh, Mr. Ramsen, uh, Chris Ramsen, who is no longer in the room, is he here? Chris Ramsen is uh, right back there. He sets up all our sound, the microphone, our uh, lights, and everything in the auditorium. And I really appreciate everything he does for the school, as well as Mrs. Muka and the choir who provide this, you know, singing this morning, um, and our custodians who help set up and help uh, clean up as well. Um, just something to note this morning, we have SATs going on in the building, that's uh, testing, yeah, so we had to move our football game to 3 o'clock, and that's why this event went from a brunch to a lunch, and uh, we don't mind though, but with that in mind, please don't walk out to the right into the, the school D-wing, into the circle. Um, you'll be allowed to, once SATs are finished, probably at 2 o'clock, but um, the Hall of Fame wall, or the hallways, to the left, down by the gym, so if you haven't seen that yet, Sue has about 50 plaques already hung from the past six uh, Hall of Fame inductions, and it's a really nice wall that's come a long way, and these eight new inductees will be added uh, this week, if they aren't added already. Uh, so, with that said, I would like to introduce our first uh, award for today. Uh, this award is based on our very first principal, Mr. Bernard Packin. And I would like to invite his son up, Mr. Mark Packin, to introduce the Bernie Packin Family Memorial Society. So I would also like to thank the Hall of Fame Committee uh, for establishing the Packin Family Student Athlete Scholarship. And again, especially Sue Bonnet for all of her hard work in putting this year's program together. I, along with my son Andrew and uh, my cousin Jamie, are here today and am proud to re -re represent the Packin family in presenting this scholarship to this year's recipient. My father, as the first principal of PHHS, was so very proud of this high school. After my mother and our family, PHHS and its students were truly the love of his life. He spent many hours here because he loved working with the staff and always felt that he, had a best, that he had the best educators for his students. He was a high profile principal, spending time here, not only in support of all the athletic, music, and theater programs, but any event that was going on in the school. I actually brought along some pictures, uh, if anyone's interested, of some of the events that went on here at PHHS. There are pictures here of my dad, along with other staff members, in various costumes participating uh, in a talent show. By contrast, as a graduate of Livingston High School down the road, 
I can only remember seeing my principal twice, once entering as a freshman and then graduating. Big difference in my dad. The reason I know he would be honored to have a student athlete scholarship in his name is that he was indeed an outstanding student and athlete. My father was a senior class president at Irvington High School. He was chosen by the North Star Ledger as a first team All-State football tackle. As an aside, two of his uh, fellow All-State candidates, Al D. Regattas and Frank DePuca, ended up in the NFL. My dad received an athletic scholarship to Rutgers College, where he graduated with a double major in phys ed and history. He later continued on to earning a master's degree in education. He started his long life as a uh, his long life career in education at Wayne High School, rising to the position of vice principal by age 26. He then moved on to become principal of Central Junior High School here in Persephone. Three years later, becoming the principal of Persephone High School on the other side of town. As the town of Persephone was growing it became clear that a second high school was needed. My father was asked to work closely with the architect and planners of the new school, this school we are now standing in, and was then hired to be its first principal, serving in that position for 19 years. During his 35-year career in education, he received many awards, among those the National Education Leadership Award and the Croft publication Principal of the Year in 1961. One of his greatest accomplishments was the establishment of the first parent-teacher-student association in New Jersey, acknowledging the role that students should play in the formation of policy and direction in their school. As you can see, my father loved to see student participation. He once stayed to me at a football game that he wouldn't mind seeing the stands empty of students at halftime if it meant they were on the field playing instruments, throwing batons, or waving flags. He said he would find a uniform for everyone. So, we, so here we are today to honor one student that exemplifies the qualities of my father. On behalf of, the, of my family, I am proud to present the 2016-17 Packin Family Student Athlete Scholarship of $500 to Alexei Sepin. <laughs> Today, the accomplishments here at the Sydney Mills High School truly represent our family's values. Congratulations. Truly grateful to the Packin family and to be able to share in a legacy of an amazing, amazing educator like Mr. Packin. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Packin, and thank you, Alexi. Okay, from here we are going to open up the food and ask that all the inductees uh, approach the uh, lunch first with their families and that we, we can get started after they get seated. Good afternoon. Uh, we'd like to start our presentations. My name is John Pico. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to introduce the mayor of Parsippany Troy Hills, uh, Jamie Barbario. Uh, Jamie is a graduate of Parsippany Hills High School. So what year? Seventy-nine. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Parsippany. But some of you have been to Parsippany already. Um, I want to say I roamed these halls back in from seventy-five to seventy-nine. And I, I'm honored to be in front of a judge here, uh, Sue Bergmeier, who was, I was a sophomore when you were a senior. So that's neat. And I had Herman Pappas who couldn't make it to the, uh, today, but uh, I graduated with him. What's really nice about being back here, I get to see my teachers that were here um, when I was a student. And so all in the back, you got Mr. Piotrowski, Mr. Clevis, Mr. Uh, Prudenti, and, you know, everybody here. And Mrs. Herman, I have to tell you, um, because of our class, we made her a pretty thick-skinned math teacher. And, and, but I'm so glad I survived her math class. That being said, um, 
June Mania and your son. I mean, you know, I've known you for years, and I'm proud. You know, it's a proud moment for you. Uh, that being said, um, for Sippany Hills High School, I got to tell you, I, I love it, and I bleed blue and black. And yes, Mr. Packett was my principal, and I listened to him. Um, I, and I believe those colors, and anybody can tell you, I come to every football game that I can make, everything that goes on in the township with the schools. That being said, we have a great history here at Parsippany, and we were ranked the fifth place, best place to live in the United States just two weeks ago. Uh, that's because we're all here and you're kidding, you know. But that being said, to, to all the inductees, congratulations on behalf of the township and myself. And Mr. Rodriguez, I cannot forget you for uh, always wrapping my ankles, going football games. God bless you. Your son's a smart kid, smarter than me, so I'll have to hire him one day. With that being said, God bless you all, and congratulations. Thank you, Jane. Um, our first, uh, we're, we're giving out the, uh, the awards in order of graduation. Okay. The first recipient is the Honorable Laura Burke Meyer, class of 1977. She's a graduate of Rutgers University with a BA High Honors, University of California, Los Angeles, a Doctor of Jurisprudence. 2005 to a term ending 2021, she is a Superior Court Judge in San Diego, California. 1986 to 2005, she's Assistant U.S. Attorney, San Diego, California and Executive Assistant U.S. Attorney, Chief Not Narcotics Enforcement Section. 1986, she's Deputy District Attorney, San Diego District Attorney's Office. In 1984 to 1986, she's Judicial Law Clerk to Judge J. Lawrence Irving, U.S. District Court, San Diego. I'd like to introduce Laura Berkmeyer. Very successful athletes here uh, today. I was not one of those. 
Um, but I, I say that because one of the other things that I'm most grateful about um, for high school was the opportunity to try a lot of things, uh, to experience things for the first time, and, to, and the extracurriculars here were fantastic. So um, I, to call myself a mediocre spring track and winter track shot putter and discus would uh, actually be exaggerating. Uh, and, but I had the opportunity to do a lot of different things. Um, the variety shows, the talent shows were big. Uh, when I was here, we, um, we had groups, we did a lot of dance, uh, and I really enjoyed that. And um, Interact was a big thing when I was here. And um, I was president of Interact, and at that time we were one of the largest Interact clubs in the entire United States. Uh, and what I remember about that was, for the first time, really enjoying public service. And obviously, um, that's a theme that lasted in my life. Uh, but um, I stand here uh, very grateful, uh, grateful to all of you um, for attending. And um, most importantly, congratulations to all my fellow inductees. Thank you. The second inductee is unable to attend today. It's Herman Pappas, class of 1979. He's a 1989 graduate of the University of Southern Mississippi where he played tennis. 1975 to 79, he was on the PHS te tennis team and in 1979, he was first singles. 1983 to 1984, he was at Mississippi State uh, University and he was a, did it on a Division I tennis scholarship. 1983-84, um, he was first team all SEC Division I. Um, 1984 to 1987, he played professionally with the, on the AP, ATP tour. Um, in 1983, he was New Jersey State Professional Men's Championship. Uh, the inductee is Herman Pappas. Our third inductee is Dr. Aaron Simon Schwartz, class of 1984. A 1988 graduate of Tufts University with a BS in occupational therapy and graduated magna cum laude. 1993, Medical College of Virginia, she received her degree. Uh, she's a pediatric neuroradiologist and clinical director at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, associate professor, professor of radiology at the Perlman School of Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania, past president of the American Society of Pe Pediatric Neuroradiology, American Society of Spine Radiology, and Eastern Neuroradiology Society. 2015 Women Neuroradiology Leadership Award, American Society of Neuroradiology, American Association of Women Radiologists, and American College of Radiologists. Dr. Erwin Simon, Simon Schwartz. for this tremendous honor. I also wanted to thank uh, Sue Bonnet for her enthusiasm for tracking me down as well um, and for diligently making sure that all the details were correct um, and that we all knew where to come. And it, it, it is really such a tremendous honor. Um, I have such incredible fond memories of this school. Um, most of you probably don't know, but we grew up you know, the school is 20 reader drive and I grew up at 16 reader drive. So this school was literally my backyard um, with an older brother and a younger sister who came through here as well. We were part of the PHHS family for many, many years. I even worked here as a substitute teacher while I was in college um, because it just wasn't ready to leave the place yet. Um, when Sue contacted me about this honor, she asked uh, if there were any particular faculty members um, that I would want to invite. And there were two that really stood out for me. Um, the first uh, was um, Claire Pompey. And she said, of course, she's going to be the um, She was my first anatomy teacher. 
here um, and parts of anybody else. And I went on to take advanced anatomy in college and then excelled so much in that that I was invited to be the TA of that course the following year, um, all because of my the tremendous preparation that I got here um, at, at Park Hills and, and because of Claire, and that led to uh, my love of medicine, doing neuroradiology, which is all about uh, brain imaging and anatomy and spine anatomy, and it's what I do all day, every day. So thank you for setting me on that path. Um, and the other was Mr. Rodriguez, and I'm delighted that, that you could come and that Anne could be here as well. We had such fond memories of um, studying Spanish together all those years and traveling to Spain and having an amazing trip as a high school student going to Europe you know, without, uh, without the family, without anybody back. Remember, this was a very long time ago. No cell phones, no anything. Um, so with the support of my tremendous family to let me, you know, fly across the world with teachers that they knew and loved and trusted so much um, from here was really, it's a very, very special memory. Um, other than the fact that everyone on the trip got sick. But that's <laughs> another story we won't tell during lunch. Um, so I'm, I'm tremendously grateful for the incredible foundation um, that I got here and how it has allowed me to um, be successful and to be doing all the things that I want to do uh, with my life and my career. Uh, special thanks to my family, my wonderful parents, uh, Shelly and Natalie, um, who are here, my brother Andrew and sister Jerry, and of course, uh, my husband Darren and my wonderful son, Bryson the fireman, back there. Um, so thank you all very much. Our next recipient is Keith Pollock, class of 1997. He's a graduate of the School of Art Institute of Chicago. He's currently editor-in-chief of Interview Magazine. He's a founding editor of DuJour Magazine. He's digital editorial director at Elle Magazine, and he was a digital ex executive editor at Brand Publications. I'd like to introduce Keith Pollock. Thank you, Sue Bonnet. I really appreciate uh, this honor. It's um, very exciting. It's very exciting to have received that email this summer. Um, I think that I was smiling for about 10 minutes and my, my face really hurt. At the end of it, it was, it was a tremendous, exciting email to receive. Um, and much like high school, I don't feel very prepared for this. I feel like um, uh, I had a tendency of procrastinating that has carried me through to where I am now. Um, I would say like I give this a lot of thought, uh, and when I look back on high school, I think I had a, a tremendous amount, and I graduated in 97, almost 20 years ago, I had a tremendous amount of support around me, um, certainly the principal and uh, faculty and friends and friends' parents and my parents, my mom's here with me today. Um, I was an average student. I was. I got some good grades, I got some bad grades. There's some teachers here who may have given me some bad grades. Um, you know, I, I was great at art, and I was very passionate about art, but some of the academic things fell short. And, um, but there was this effort, this concerted effort around me and the people I surrounded myself with to kind of push me towards graduation. And I, I was thinking back to my senior year, um, and within the second month of the school year, I had exceeded all of my absences. Like, it was dire. <laughs> um, and I remember, you know, everyone around me was like, we can do this, we can get you out of here, like, you're, you know, uh, you have great potential. And that was kind of the theme of my, uh, my high school career, it was like, you can do this, and uh, you have a great talent, and uh, let's get you out of here. So, um, I did, I graduated. Uh, successfully by the skin of my teeth uh, with, a, with a scholarship in art and um, you know I, I feel like the success I've had in my career has been also surrounding myself with people, um, mentors and people that really have my back. Um, 
and it's great to be here because I have not been back in many years. Five years ago, I worked at Elle magazine, and we actually did a photo shoot on the steps of the front. Uh, it ran PHHS. It was a nice moment uh, for me, but uh, a very nice nostalgic moment for me. But anyhow, thank you very much. Um, it's great to be back. The next recipient is Chris Medea, class of 1998. Chris is a graduate of Rutgers University and has been a member of the New Jersey State Police Force for the last 12 years. From 1998 to 2002, he wrestled at Rutgers University. At Parsippany Hills High School, he had a high school record of 94 and 21, and at, when he graduated, he held the school record for wins. In 1997, he was fifth place at the state championships in Atlantic City. In 1998, he placed fourth in the state championships. He's a Region 3 champion, a Morris County champion, and a three-time District 9 champion. He's a four-time all-conference and two-time all-area selection. Uh, he's a recipient of PHHS Outstanding Achievement Award. Currently, he's fourth on the list of career wins of 94, and he has a brown belt in jujitsu. <laughs> Your mom said this. Tell me. <laughs> okay. I'd like to introduce Chris Medea. <clears throat> down the road on Windsor, Windsor Road and um, you know this place brings back a lot of memories. Uh, I want to thank Sue Bonnet and John Pico for uh, their hard work bringing this uh, committee together and uh, it's, a, it's a great honor and uh, I'm, I'm very appreciative of that. Uh, just looking around I know we used to uh, practice right here in the cafeteria so you know, I remember rolling out the mats here, and then rolling up the mats after we were done Saturday mornings. You know, usually about three hours, three and a half hours. It was, you know, a lot of time spent here. Uh, it's also an honor because uh, of the company that I'm in with the other honorees. You know, we have judges and doctors and PhDs, professional athletes, I almost feel a little inadequate, you know, <laughs> with that kind of competition, but it's a great honor. So why did I start wrestling? Well, the same reason that everybody starts wrestling. I didn't make the middle school basketball team. <laughs> but, looking back, I think uh, it, it worked out uh, pretty well. It's good to be sharing this with another wrestler, Evan, who uh, you know was a tremendous wrestler in his own right, and I also had the privilege of wrestling with for a while at Rutgers. And uh, he's one of those PhDs. So. <laughs> I think uh, it's great to see the people that I haven't seen in a, in a long time. I, I can see right in front of me now my middle school coach, Don Stuger, who kind of got the, the ball rolling with me. And uh, I, I just, you know, I want to say thank you. It, I remember certain things very vividly. I remember one, the one day, one day you told me, or you told someone I was work out, working out with, you said, keep working out with this kid, he's got some promise. And I remember it like it was yesterday. And uh, you know, all these years later, that, that kind of sticks with me. And I know your trademark was the beard when I was in middle school. So uh, I'm sure you're, you know, if you approve, <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, and 
and there are, you know, there are a lot of other people. I think to have any success in anything, especially sports, I think a lot of things have to kind of line up for you. You know, you can, you know, you have to work hard, and and a little ability doesn't hurt. But I think uh, you kind of have to get lucky in a lot of ways, and uh, I, I definitely got lucky. I had a very supportive family who was here with me today. Thank you very much. Mom and Dad, you know, couldn't have done it without you guys. Uh, all those weekends driving me all over creation, going to tournaments here and there, and, you know, dealing with me when, you know, maybe I lost or, or when I won or whatever I was doing with my weight at the time and having to, to diet and all that good stuff. You guys, uh, you guys put up with a lot. And it was nice to see, you know, that many years later, my mother was still running the show uh, for the youth wrestling program. And, uh, you know, good to see. I, I also see my other great coaches that I had here, and, and you need that. I think I had that. I had great family, great coaches. My high school coach, Matt Siempa, is here. I think uh, it's fair to say he made me what I was with wrestling, put a, a ton of time in with me, a lot of his own personal time, um, following me to tournaments, you know, getting me to go out for Team New Jersey and go out to freestyle and Greco Nationals and, and stuff like that. And that, I think, kind of made the difference. If, you know, wrestling's a funny sport. You get out of it pretty much what you put into it. And, uh, you know, I think I, I definitely have him to thank for that. So thank you, man. Um, other, you know, other coaches. Coach Pio, where are you? Oh, uh, okay. All right. Um, even the coaches that aren't here, I, I remember I had a coach uh, early on who, who unfortunately passed away a few years ago. His name was Roman Ruderman. And uh, he was one of the first coaches I had when I started wrestling. And I remember he's just this Russian guy, big brawny guy with a mustache, used to pick me up in my parents' driveway and take me, uh, take me to work out. I didn't know it at the time, but it's, it's a funny story. He, you know, he was a, a multi, many time, you know, Russian national wrestling champion. And he came here to this country. He left Russia because he was ostracized because he was half Jewish. And uh, I was one of the wrestlers that got to reap the benefits of that. So, you know, it's funny how, how that kind of stuff works. I also have to uh, single out David Buono, who was my workout partner all through high school. And, uh, you know, it helps to have a, an all-star workout partner to push you, and, that, and I definitely had that. And that, that was a, you know, that made a lot of difference. So thanks, Dave. Appreciate it. Um, you know, it's pretty pretty nostalgic coming back here, and, and it brings back a lot of a lot of good memories. And uh, you know, this high school and this town, it, it's a special place. And uh, you know, I look forward to to now seeing my nephews come up in the. Uh, Parsippany program, and you know, seeing whatever they whatever they get into, and what they do. So, thanks again, everybody. Our next recipient was unable to attend. It's Johnny Moran, class of 2000, graduate of Syracuse University. Uh, Johnny played two sports at Parsippany Hills, football and basketball. He was a first team all state, uh, all county, all conference. He was selected as top 25 USA Today Heisman Trophy. Uh, he was a super prep all American. 2004, 2007, he played in the NFL for the Oakland Raiders. 2008, 2009, he played two seasons in the Canadian Football League. Uh, Johnny also was a basketball player for, playing for Richie Boucher, who was also a member of the Hall of Fame. 
He scored 1,377 career points. He was a third-team Wall State selection, first-team Wall County, and three-time Wall Conference. Johnny Moran. Next recipient is Evan Gallipo, class of 2001 and a Rutgers graduate. In 2012, we received his PhD from the University of Pennsylvania in mechanical, mechanical engineering and applied mechanics and graduated summa cum laude. In wrestling at Persephone Hills, he had a career record of 74 and 18. In 2000, he placed seventh in Atlantic City at the state championships. In 2001, he was fourth at the state championships in Atlantic City. Two-time District 9 champ, two-time Morris County Tournament finalist. Uh, Evan also was a track athlete, and four-year letter winner, he pole vaulted 12-6, and qualified for the state groups meet twice. Evan Gallup. So thank you very much for the people who nominated me for this award. One thing I wanted to say, especially after leaving Parsippany Hills, is that I really came to appreciate how wonderful the teachers and coaches that I had were. I find myself very fortunate that I was able to come to Parsippany Hills. It was basically the perfect school for me. Not only did it fulfill my athletic needs, but it fulfilled my ac academic needs. Having great science teachers who happen to be here, Claire Pompey and Dr. Tilak, um, really means a lot to me and <laughs> motivated me throughout the years in my scientific career. And I continue to, to push forward with the things that they taught me. It was also really great to have such dedicated and capable coaches. Uh, Mr. Siampa, um, Mr. Pico, Mr. Fulton, who are also not here. Um, it was incredibly fortunate that these people were so devoted to what they were doing and so knowledgeable, and that I was able to make use of that. Um, the last thing I wanted to say is that I really appreciate this honor, and I hope that in continuing my career, I can live up to the the honor bestowed on me. Thank you. Uh, next recipient is a former staff member, Claire Prompey. Uh, one of the things Parsippany Hills has been noted for over the years is the quality of our science program, and that started with. Uh, staff members who were lead, uh, department heads uh, before Claire, and that was continued on. Um, one of the things as a department head when I was with Claire in that position is Claire taught me the, uh, the concept that the only way you can really develop your programs and understand what you're doing in the classroom is you have to have contact with your graduates. Okay. That philosophy I know she carried over into the science area, and I know I carried over into the business area with some of the changes that we made over the years. Um, Claire was one of the original faculty members at Persephone Hills High School. In 1990, she received the Distinguished Faculty Award. 1993, she was selected as a member of, a member of Who's Who Among American Teachers. In 1994, she was a nominee for the Princeton Distinguished Secondary School Teacher. 1996, American Chemical Society recognition for guidance and encouragement of National Chemistry Olympiad nominee. 1997, at Johns Hopkins recognition for the preparation provided to students to attend their university. 2002, mentor Nina Fernandez, who became a semifinalist in the Intel Science Talent Search. In 2006, she was a Par Troy Rotary Outstanding Educator of the Year. Claire Pompey. Before Claire comes up, uh, one of her former students, Jen Franz, would like to say a few words. Jen is our supervisor of English in the district today.
thank you for letting me share a little story or two about Claire today. Um, I think if you want to know the quality of a teacher, you ask uh, her students. And I'm here today not as a teacher or administrator, but as one of Claire Pompey's um, students. In, uh, we have Dr. Galbo and Dr. Schwartz who uh, got into, they had the success of being able to be in her anatomy and physiology classes, um, her physics classes. I never got that far. Um, I had really no business being in her chemistry class sophomore year. Uh, I think at the time, they just kind of put me in there because, you know, if you were an honors student, they just kind of threw you in with all of the rest of them at the time. And I had nowhere near the math background that I needed to really be successful in that class. I think she knew that, um, but, Claire didn't care whether you had uh, a brain cell in your head. She only cared whether you came to play. And um, I took the class. I, I was in the class with two of my friends. I, I will mention them just because some of you do um, know them. It was 1987. <laughs> Diane Bartoli and Jenna Absug were um, the two friends in that class. Uh, we were good students, but we were... Um, very much into, you know, gossiping and, and being 16-year-old girls, you know, and Claire would roll her eyes at us. And uh, I, I wanted to specifically talk about one time where um, we were in a lab group and Claire must have, um, you have to understand at the time, it was 1987, and our hair was <laughs> really, I mean, we were just walking flammability, the nails, the hair, everything. <laughs> And I specifically remember, she must have told us 20 times, bozos, it's fire. You gotta be careful with the Bunsen burner. And of course we're doing our lab, she's over helping someone on the other, uh, the, the, the group on the other side of the, the room. And Diane, you know, we're talking, we're not paying attention, and Diane's sleep is on fire. <laughs> and I remember our reaction, we just, we took the notebook and we said, oh my God, she's on fire. And we just put it out quickly because we said, oh my God, she's gonna, you know, Miss Pompey, she's gonna, she's gonna kill us. And in true Claire Pompey fashion, she comes over to us with a big smile on her face and says, do you believe me now? <laughs> and just walked away. <laughs> uh, in all seriousness, uh, what I remember about Claire is that she, she got the reputation of teaching, you know, the, the honors kids, the smart kids. She was, she was that teacher, but I knew her as someone who stayed after school with me until four o'clock, um, three out of five days a week. She would wait sometimes until we were finished with our student council meetings and everything else that we had to do just to make sure that um, we could understand what was going on. I think that was one of the first times in my life, learning had become pretty easy to me, and she, uh, wrote, uh, she was doing balancing equations on the board, and I felt like I was punched in the face. I didn't understand anything that was going on. And she sat the entire year and made sure that I understood it. She uh, was quite a character in her lab coat and her, uh, her it was yardstick, she had the, the big yardstick, and she would get up on the lab table and she would do a dance and, and sing about the periodic table of elements. <laughs> and I mean, we thought she was nuts. And people were like, this one was crazy. She's so into this. Um, and today, it's so funny, you know, my husband will be watching Jeopardy and uh, I will know things, you know, I, I'll, potassium K, I'll know these things. And he'll, he'll look at me and say, how do you know this? And I, I remember, I say, it's Claire Pompey. She was singing about the isotopes and electrons and everything else. Um, so I, I just wanted to really talk uh, about her as one of her former students um, who wasn't a scientist but uh, was a student and really thank her for all that she did. That's what I did, every day, 
I took my love of science and wanted to make sure that the next generation knew that science is real. You don't believe in it because it is. These people that tell me they believe in science drive me insane. There are facts that we follow, people. Okay, so I'm still at it. So I'm um, grateful to, to uh, Sue Barnett and to Pico, one of my buddies. Um, I do have to say just this much, too. I've, I've been retired for a while now, and um, fortunately or unfortunately, I run into some of my kids, and uh, I, I always felt as I was teaching that my biggest gift was my understanding of science to make sure that I passed it on so that people could learn the passion and the love that I have for this subject, that somehow they would pick it up and carry it on into the next generation. And for those of you that are still teaching, whatever the subject is, if you feel that way about it, whether you say it every day or not, the way you act, the way you teach, the kids will pick it up. And they'll understand how important it is for us to continue to learn for as long as we can and to be able to believe in the fact that education is an extremely important part of a society. So I thank you again for this honor. I am uh, I'm very happy that you put me in a lab coat. I was very thrilled by that. Um, I would have preferred my yardstick, however. <laughs> Thanks again, and thank you again for the song. concludes our ceremony. We'd like to thank everybody for coming. Um, I know Sue and, and Gio, they would like to take some pictures of the, um, the nominees. And uh, if you can please come forward. And Gio, thank you very much again.